flying program proper will start at 11 o'clock, 1100 hours. But prior to that, we will be playing our usual little game of moving our military and classic vehicles down the crowd line to uh, give you uh, a little opener. Dirty light aircraft, uh, our vintage visitors. now flying with uh, seven squadrons in the Royal Air Force as well as uh, being exported. Data link system for more rapid information transfer from the AWACS ground station and from other fighters. Antonada crew is now wearing the latest night vision goggles to further enhance their uh, 24 hour interception potential. The aircraft likely to hold the front line until the arrival of Eurofighter, still some little way down track. Do this. 
And mothers love everything they do. <laughs> The bits S2 special to be precise. He's uh, got an air transport pilot's license, and here he is now doing a succession of flick rolls, three flick rolls as he flies towards us for a high speed pull up. So, Will Curtis, how are things up there? Over. Will, what sort of G were you pulling on that uh, pull up? Uh, we've done about. Uh... Yes, indeed, the two flick rolls at the top of the loop show the shape of the, the old Love Heart suite, if you remember that. Now, hanging motionless at the top for a stall turn, full left rudder, and uh, tumbling down. No, I got that wrong, didn't I, Roy? It wasn't a stall turn at all. What have we got coming up next? <laughs> the aircraft will fly. It's got a 300 horsepower engine. It's the only aircraft of its type outside of the US, and Will is really using that power to great effect, as you can see. Vertically rolling as he climbs, this is a torque roll. As the airflow ceases over the wings, the rolling effect of the ailerons falls away, and it's just the torque of that huge engine that keeps the aircraft rolling. Tumbling back down to tail slide and then hammerhead back down through the smoke trail. Oh. Now flying away from us in the inverted for another negative push-up. So what's the crowd look like there, from up there, Will? They're spinning round, I guess. flying back parallel with the runway. and we'll hear the screaming of the airflow through the bracing struts, the roar of the engine. Well, perhaps you can talk us through it as you do the pull-out. Yeah, it's just reaching over now. Down we go, full power. And I'm just using the power of the rudder and the lift of the fuselage to take the aircraft into level right. Five and a half feet sideways here. This is hard work, I can tell you. And we're rolling level. All complete. Well, that's looked sounded truly spectacular. And the other thing is just to tell you and remind you about helicopter flights from uh, the area around Hangar 1, that's uh, to the north side of, uh, of the field. Fast helicopters are flying helicopter flights, so today they're flying a twin squirrel, which is a twin engine helicopter, it makes life a little easier and safer to do that. So sadly it's no longer 18 pounds a person to fly, it's, uh, it's now 20 pounds a person, but we said that uh, in the program things are subject to change, and I'm afraid this is one of those little changes. So anybody who would like a helicopter flight uh, in a twin squirrel, see the airship from the air, have flown at the wall of International 2000, the place to go is far helicopters. Play season. One Yak-52 and three Yak-50s. And here they come. Running in there. About 200 knots. Number one, Jeff Hawkinson. Number two, Tony Baptiste. Baffo is his own ex Royal Air Force pilot. As they move into Vic, Jacob going up on the left hand side there is. Yak enthusiast who started the Yak group at uh, Old Serum, which operates the two aircraft with checkerboards. And Mike Revel now coming round at the ending his solo performance. And the one you're seeing today is the 
17S, and this actual machine is flying in the same livery that it carried when it was delivered to London as the U.S. Embassy London Aircraft, the beautiful blue fuselage, yellow wing, red and white striped rudder. She's operated for us today by the Duke of Brabant Air Force, who joined us through the Merck on Friday afternoon from their base where it flew in in formation with the uh, big B-25 Mitchell that we will be seeing later. An extremely successful design in its civil role in the 1930s, and like all good aircraft, once war was declared, the design was continued for military purposes, and a number of civilian machines were also impressed by both the U.S. Air Force and by the U.S. Navy. And in fact, some 550 aircraft flew in their service markings, and some indeed were taken over by the, uh, the Royal Air Force over here. Again, this particular aircraft was um, flown by Brigadier General Martin Scanlon before, before, and it's still going very strong, and it'll go a great deal stronger if you'd pour lashings of money into their buckets, please. slowly and you're about to see it now. team today at about six foot four and weighing approximately 20 stones so he'll be traveling at about 150 miles an hour there <laughs> and there we go you can see our cameraman just taking a little step back from the formation what they're doing now is a bomb burst and that gives them their individual Base in the sky to enable to de deploy their parachutes safely. What you'll also be able to see, if you look in the middle of all the canopies, is two of the canopies joining together to flex around the strings of the canopy, climb down those strings, and attach himself to the top of the handles of the canopy. Oh, the longest serving member of the team. The team was formed back in the 1960s and he was one of the original members. And as you can see our biplane is bringing in the Army Air Corps flag. Once they're on the ground, they'll be taking off the parachutes and taking off the smoke. The smoke is particularly hot, so we have to make sure that it doesn't interfere with any of the lines or the fabrics of the canopies.
Once the lineup has been done, which will be done shortly, all the parachuters will be packing their parachutes, and that will be in between the President's enclosure and the Army Air Corps Association tent. So if you've got any ideas of taking up the sport yourself, or you'd like to chat it. Many years this aircraft is the standard training aircraft of the Royal Air Force. Comes from a long and distinguished period. Siddeley Viper. Here comes Val from Proud Right. The GR1, of course, is the interdictor strike variant of the tornado. It's a bomber, if you like. Here comes Learn Slow. Or it's Learn Slow as the tornado like this. Percival, and finally under the auspices of BAE. Note on rolling. John Long, he was still flying. As it is, he had with about 14,000 hours to his credit, and he's still an active civilian pilot. And there's Leonides replacing the cheetah. Gave the provost to top speed of a round. 200 miles an hour. And if you look down to your right, it's a personal benefit, and we'll shut up and let you listen. And now John Perry breaks off. In the Pistol Provost. But you can legitimately call it a sleeper transport. Goody Bird. A DAC. A Pioneer. An R4D. A C54. You can even call it Puff the Magic Dragon if you will. But it is the redoubtable Douglas DC3. Introduced in the mid 1930s to go on to be probably one of the most widely produced twin-engine general transport aircraft in the world. It also served throughout the Second World War, not only with all the Allied forces, it was so good that even the Japanese decided to produce their own version, a copycat. Here she comes in from the right. Tony Holden flying this beast, based down at North Wild, and the colour scheme very kindly provided by that generous Mr Spielberg for filming purposes. And if you photographed her down in the static park, you'll note she has what is known as a careworn look. Chipped paint, well it's painted chipped paint, oil streaks, all applied for filming back in April. And when the paint was applied, it was supposed to last seven days, and it's still on there, because a little trick that the paint is actually doctored with very liquid. So that every time he flies through a bit of clag, it rejuvenates. But it makes that old aeroplane look exactly the way she would have looked in 1944. And even today, all those long years since, 
men of the paratroop regiment and the glider pilot regiment who saw it say that was one, possibly the only time they cried and it is still one of the incidents etched forever in their memory. And the DC-3 today flies in memory of all those young men, parachutists, glider pilots, and simple poor foot flogging infantry who went from civil life to conflict in the back of these aircraft. The Douglas, Dakota, one of the world's immortals. And here comes the big ducks. Uh, long and distinguished, the first British Gloucester design, heftier engines, longer nose, twin seat, all weather fighter, pilot in the front, navigator and radar operator in the rear, and the elongated people nose at the back, the elongated nose holding the radar. Contemporaneously with the uh, Gloucester Javelin. This particular aircraft operating out of Bournemouth. And coming in low from the left. Here she comes, ladies and gentlemen. There are not many grass airfields that get a display by something this big, this fast, and this comfortable. I do believe he's going to try and land. He's left us down. It's actually quite brisk. I think probably he heard our commentary and uh, in his disapproval of uh, our commentary. They then went on to produce the Mitchell and they produced the Mustang. And if you only produce three aeroplanes, but they're that good, then you're pretty good too. Production went on to nearly 10,000 airframes. Their armament was very much more offensive rather than defensive. And in fact, to such an extent that the bombardier's position, which is normally down in that plexiglass nose, was removed, and some four extra 50 calibers were put into the nose, and another four were fitted to side sponsors controlled remotely, but it is the, uh, the B-25G that perhaps beggars description, because into that they packed a massive 75 millimeter gun. Now that's the same gun that was mounted on the Sherman tank, and is the same caliber as was mounted on most of the early war German armor. It also carried a further 50 caliber, for Tracer aiming that gun and for flak suppression. It was used against shipping. Better cause to subscribe to. And Danny pushing the extra up while his uh, commentator grabs the radio mic. And skill and dedication of Denny Dobson. He's taught them a great deal about flying that very exciting American built aerobatic biplane. About five weeks ago, Denny, who's been flying two pit specials for the last ten years or so, decided uh, he wanted to play with some big boys' toys. So Denny took delivery of this rather fine machine. 
particular aircraft, ladies and gentlemen, is a German-designed and built aircraft called an Extra 300. And you've probably gathered from my introduction when I mentioned Extra Special Aerobatics that, in fact, the name of the team takes its name from the two aircraft that we now fly from our base at Deanthorpe in the heart of Northamptonshire. Very famous former World War II base, home to B-50... Uh, B-17 Flying Fortresses, almost said B-52s there, but that wouldn't have been quite right, but that would have been very exciting if they were based there. B-17... Giving a top speed of around about two, ooh, 225 miles an hour, an economical cruise of around about uh, 170 miles an hour, and a fantastic airframe. Ladies and gentlemen, you will not believe that this airframe is stressed to withstand G-forces of plus 23, yes, you heard me right, plus 23 and minus 23 G. Typically during uh, manoeuvres, Denny is experiencing anything up to plus 10 and minus uh, 10 G. And in simple terms, that means that plus 10 G He's uh, being pushed into the uh, rather comfortable seats, I might have to say, at uh, ten times his body weight. A legendary de Havilland factory. The grey de Havilland repeat, swinging in from right to left. Ken Whitehead's machine beat firm, we think, at the controls today. A few years after the whites, he flew a small, hard confection of linen, wood, and wire. His name was Geoffrey de Havilland. Worldwide deployment. Ladies and gentlemen, the Army Air Corps. Sinister shape. 